So good morning everyone and welcome to the session. Uh, we are going to talk about Flight and Flight is a production grade data and machine learning orchestration platform slash tool. Uh, my name is Ekanj Gupta, I work at Zeta. Zeta is a banking as a service company and you can uh, connect to me on Twitter via the handle at Eko Ekanj Gupta. With me, my uh, co-speaker Shivai could not come today because he is unwell. Uh, so moving on, let's start with this. Uh, so the basic outline of this whole session would be how machine learning can be productionized uh, using a Kubernetes native platform. So uh, I have been doing machine learning for quite a while now and I have seen that uh, I have not yet found a solution for it to run on a Kubernetes native platform and now I found Flight. Also I would like to mention Qflow is also a good alternative if you have heard about it. Um, although. I like flight more and we will talk about it more uh, as, as to why I like it. So uh, let's talk about MLOps. Um, anyone here knows about MLOps, what is MLOps and how it is different from ML? Yeah, sure, you can go ahead if you want to talk. Okay, sure, we are here to learn about MLOps only. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let's talk about DevOps first. So DevOps refers to development operations and it brings together the development testing and operational aspects of uh, software development. So best practices might include uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, infrastructure as code. So infrastructure as code refers to as di uh, like making infrastructure via like code. If you have heard about Terraform or if you have, although, um, Crossplane is not infrastructure as code, but it does not, it actually does the same thing. And uh, DevOps also include monitoring and logging and serving it on microservices. Uh, so DevOps would basically entail of making of this siloed processes into one cohesive uh, set of instructions. So as dev, as a dev needs DevOps, uh, likewise ML needs MLOps because uh, MLOps might, ML has a lot of challenges such as models can deteriorate over a long period of time and the data uh, struck, like the data can be very complex, a huge data set. Uh, there can be a lot of infrastructure overhead and like if you have already heard, heard about ML, then you would know that the hardware requirement is quite large uh, most of the time. So I am talking about CPUs and TPUs that a lot of people might not have and the scale of operations is uh, exponential on that. So if we talk about the whole ML life cycle, you can see that the ML part of the whole ML ops life cycle is approximately just 1%. So uh, we have the data collection, the feature extraction, we have the um, infrastructure, we have uh, monitoring, logging and everything, data verification, training, testing. And that is just, the ML part is just like the 1% of the whole ML ecosystem. Therefore, we need MLOps and we need a cohesive platform that brings together different components, teams and model onto a single platform. So when we are doing ML, uh, probably we have a separate data science team and a, pro, a different uh, DevOps team and a different um, MLOps team and we want a single platform so that uh, we can do all of these stuff um, in a structured manner. So we would need an MLOps platform that is highly scalable, extensible and highly reliable. So we are introducing Flight. What is Flight? Flight is a Kubernetes native workflow automation platform for business critical machine learning and data processing at scale. So we have a lot of words and I have highlighted a lot of words here. So what is Kubernetes native? We can run like the propeller inside Kubernetes so that uh, all the MLOps part is run on Kubernetes as pods. Uh, then there is workflow automation. So what is a workflow? Uh, if you have heard about DAGs, so DAGs are uh, directed acyclic graphs and it is just a set of instructions. Uh, what is machine learning and data processing? 
So machine learning and data processing is we get some data, we train some data, and we then do some testing on it and inferences. And we want all of that at scale, and flight is the tool for that. So what is the goal? So the goal is to provide a reproducible, incremental, and iterative and extensible workflow automation. Uh, we want to focus on user experience. We want to have a highly reliable uh, ecosystem. And uh, we should be able to onboard multiple teams. So such as if we have uh, a, a data science team who are looking at the data part of uh, MLOps. And uh, a second thing, like uh, deploying the model somewhere, then it should be uh, segregated. So separation of responsibility between platform teams and user teams should be there. So that is our goal. So coming to the user level concepts. So uh, what is a workflow? As I mentioned earlier, workflow is a set of instructions, a sequence of uh, instructions, uh, which would actually help us understand what is going on in a whole process. It is very It is highly directed and always acyclic. And uh, what is task? So a uh, task in any of the DAGs or in any workflow is the single most uh, smallest unit, unit of uh, uh, execution, sorry. Yeah, it is the single most smallest unit of execution. A task can be defined as uh, like if you have a whole ML code written, a uh, smallest task would be just to fetch the data set. So that could be a task. And a second task would be like if we want to clean that data set. So that could be a second task. Uh, yeah, a set of tasks would uh, make a workflow. So what are launch plans? So if uh, we have uh, a workflow and we want to customize the workflow before its invocation, uh, like if we want to put some different parameters, defo uh, uh, default, uh, like we want to change the default arguments, uh, we have a launch plan on flight. So uh, going on to the next slide, we have dynamic workflows. So in dynamic workflows, uh, there is one thing known as static workflows. The other thing is known as dynamic workflows. In static workflows, we already know the DAG beforehand. In uh, dynamic workflows, uh, the workflow is compiled at runtime. And it can be changed on the basis of like hyperparameters, the learning rates, uh, different inputs, and uh, different training sets and everything. It can be set on uh, runtime. So Flight has the capability for dynamic workflows. Coming on to the next slide, which is known as projects and domains. So if you have worked um, in a company then you would know that there are different domains which are specific to environments, such as uh, a development environment then goes to a staging environment. And finally, when you have everything set up and ready, it will go to a production environment. And we can segregate our code or the, uh, the whole life cycle into these domains. Uh, what are projects? Projects are the like logical grouping of tasks, which I uh, told earlier, probably something like um, fetching the data ETL, probably classification of models and forecasting of models that can be projects. And this can be divided into flight very easily. And I will show that in, in the demo. Uh, let's go to the code part of how uh, we can run MLOps on flight. So we can write the whole code in Python with the uh, type annotation. Uh, like if you have uh, worked with Python earlier, you might have already worked with decorators. It is uh, a similar thing in flight. So at task will give you an annotation for making that whole method or function as a task. Then we have a workflow annotation, which will be a logical grouping of those tasks. Also, we do not need a new language to uh, work on flight. Already you are running or writing your uh, ML code on Python, so it can be done very easily with uh, 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 Python as well. So it is very Pythonic in nature, and uh, we do not need to learn something new such as JSON, uh, although it is not that difficult, but st still. Uh, also, we can use the existing data frames, like, uh, and we can use the existing uh, libraries. Pandas, NumPy's all work extensively with uh, uh, Flight. Earlier, I got to know that uh, 
Qflow does not support that, but I do not know if how updated that is. Uh, also, we can uh, run PySpark and other Python data types with flight. Uh, all coming to the next point, we can enable caching and we can execute the whole code locally if we want to. Uh, wanted, I just wanted to mention that flight is also language independent. We can run uh, codes on Scala and Java, not only just Python. So it is a very language independent framework uh, tool. And uh, once everything is done, we can just integrate to external services and see what the output is. So if we want to scale our flight, uh, flight workloads, then we, have, uh, we can specify the resources for tasks. Uh, so that can be said as DRAs, and uh, it has been recently introduced, uh, dynamic resource allocations. So we can put the limits for a, re, uh, for a function at uh, the task uh, part only. So like this function has a resource of two, GP, uh, two CPUs and uh, 150 megabytes of RAM. Um, we can also specify the Spark cluster configuration and uh, resiliency and retries and uh, we can also execute this as well as locally. So to execute and interact with flight, we use something known as a flight CTL. So that is the flight CLI. Uh, it's just as easy to get the existing running tasks with flight, flight CTL get task, uh, create new execution with flight CTL, create execution, and uh, or get workflows with flight CTL get workflows. So here the minus P uh, indicates the project and minus D indicates the domain as I have mentioned earlier. So to reiterate, uh, minus D would be a domain like staging, development, or production. Uh, so a sample DAG would look like this. So a sample DAG would all, would, could also have a lot of DAGs inside it. Uh, so I would, say DAGs and workflows interchangeably, just to mention that. And the smallest unit of execution here, like this part, this is a task. So this is how uh, the DAG looks like on UI on flight. Then we go to UI gallery and we can see, we can launch a workflow from the UI. Also versioning is also present. So in ML workflows, um, because we are doing a lot of experiments on our existing code to make it more uh, like better, <laughs> I would say, then we would have a lot of versioning over our uh, ML workflows. So if we are doing some experiments and let's just say that V28 was the best out of the bunch, we can just pick V28 and go through with it. Next. Next. Coming on to the feature for platform engineering folks, I love platform engineering. So we can do recovery if we have platform failures. We can manage our clusters very transparently. Uh, we can add, remove, uh, and drain clusters uh, and isolate teams specific to Kate's clusters. Uh, full SSO is provided out of the box and we can provide uh, platform wide defaults to flight and we can use spot machines for um, like intratask checkpointing and executions. Uh, also, we can use monitoring and observability over flight and we can put compute limits. So let's talk about the Kubernetes side of flight. So this is a general overview of the architecture of flight. Uh, Let's go through the whole architecture. I am a user here. Uh, if I wanted to create a new workflow, I will just uh, call the flight SDK or the flight CLI, and I will register a new workflow. The workflow will go to the flight admin and it will uh, store that workflow in a RDS instance or S3, whatever is uh, configured. After that is done, this is just the registration part of the workflow. The workflow has not yet begun. Begun. So what we have to do is when we go with um, 
flight execute workflow it will go to the flight sdk it will go to flight admin and then go to propeller it will get the whole metadata and uh, uh, the data of the workflow from the inst uh, rds instance and then it will execute that over pods on kubernetes i would also like to mention that if we have um, some external services dependency uh, then we can directly fetch those from the flight propeller as well also if we have certain operators such as spark operator uh, we can directly call that from the flight propeller as well so this is the general overview of the architecture of flight on kubernetes so what are the flight what are ml features on flight so as mentioned earlier we have uh, intratask checkpointing so a checkpoint is basically referring to um, recovering of a task if we have a platform failure or an execution failure we can run multiple epochs of a certain task so that uh, we do not have to just like if we have the same data set and we want to run multiple iterations over it and we can check the progress of the checkpoint on flight ui yeah if we can see here we have uh, the current context checkpoint and uh, we can just uh, iterate over it for the checkpoint uh, coming to union ml have any of you have heard about union ml no okay so union ml is a bridge that actually uh, unifies the machine learning and the deployment part of that machine learning so union ml sits between the deployment with fast api or flask and the flight backend so that is deployment of your uh, machine learning models or ml ops workflows um, using flight kit so it's a unified interface for dataset model training and uh, online production uh, in union ml we have an ecosystem of integrations with the web app we can use fast api as mentioned earlier or flask for uh, deploying it or serving it over uh, uh, http interface uh, the union ml app will inter uh, integrate with sql or uh, tensorflow or pytorch uh, whatever is required and the flight backend can integrate with uh, aws lambda or gcp functions so uh, coming to a very major part of the presentation which is the llm fine tuning with flight uh, so recently LM, llms the large language models have become a very big thing in the ml ecosystem uh, and 8 bit quantization and uh, loras are uh, directly being supported by flight apart from that flight can also use uh, the whole ml ecosystem such as uh, pandas and numpy also tensorflow uh, out of the box so we don't have to uh, manage external uh, integrations lastly uh, what are the ml best ml ops best practices so we want ver versioning of our data and code uh, we want sanity checkpoints we want uh, ml monitoring and logging how much time is it training uh, taking it to train how much time it is taking to uh, test and uh, we want a very clean project structure we want pre commit hooks so these are all the ml ops best practices which flight provides so with flight you can code ship and scale ml pipelines with ease i am going ahead with the demo now uh, that's why i was rushing with the presentation uh, so in the demo i am going to talk about resource sharing so just a minute yeah so let's say we have a team a and team b uh, and they have the same set of tasks so a team a can be a data science team a uh, team b can be a machine learning or uh, ml deployment team so they can have the same set of tasks but it can run in different projects and different domains um, and uh, they can uh, use the same resources also i am going to show in the demo that we can also reference uh, a task from another uh, workflow so if team b wants to reference a task from team a's workflow it can do that so 
what's the basic installation and go through of flight is we can go to the flight documentation i uh, so i am going to go there so flight documentation so getting started with flight is pretty straightforward mm -hmm. yeah so we want to install uh, flight kit and uh, pi flight and we are going to run our code with the help of decorators like task and workflows and uh, the next steps would be to just serve it over your if you are installing it locally serve it over uh, docker uh, but if you are having some problems installing either flight kit or uh, uh, flight sandbox or python uh, flight provides you a sandbox workspace which i am going to use right now so if i go to flight.org we can just uh, click try flight and it will open a new workspace a sandbox workspace for you to work with so it looks like this so it is uh, something like a vs code hosted uh, if we go to the terminal uh, we have a terminal here and we have some workflow written i will just give you uh, the brief of that workflow so we have a task here just a minute so we have a task here which is getting the wine data set the second task would be to process that data set and uh, the third task could be tra to train that data set a workflow would be the logical grouping of those tasks and uh, that is mentioned here so the training workflow it will have uh, the get data method the process data method and the trained model method so uh, how do we do execute this workflow so just a moment yeah so i have written a bunch of commands let me get that for you so the first would be so we are creating a new project with uh, the id team b demo is this visible no okay is this visible so we are going to create a new project with the id team b demo uh, the name would be uh, demo team ml ops and uh, description you can put it whatever i am going to create this new project and the project has been created successfully uh, the next would be to register a new workflow with this project so i am not executing but i am just registering this workflow uh, so that would be yeah i have a team a dot py file i am registering team a dot py with the project of team b demo let's see okay so we have registered this workflow uh now let's see the execution of this workflow So what we are doing is we are running the workflow in the project called team b demo and we are uh, doing it on a remote workspace uh, also the environment is staging so uh, as mentioned earlier the domain is staging here and we are running team a pi and we are putting some hyperparameters to it once that is wait a minute team b demo team b demo staging not found amazing so let's try to do with this team a mm. staging mm. 
Okay. So, we have executed this workflow. Uh, we can go to sandbox or like whatever uh, URL it exposes. It exposes a flight console. Uh, we can go to flight and I can see that we have a lot of projects. So, we have demo data science projects that we created right now. We have a demo team MLOps uh, project and in that we have a development domain. Uh, we do not have anything here. We have hmm, was this it? Let's see. Yeah, so this is the whole workflow which has been completed in approximately 31 seconds. We can also see the graph. Uh, this was the DAG. We started, we uh, did the task of getting the data, we processed the data, we tra trained the model, and that was the end. We could also go ahead and check the Kubernetes logs for it. So it will open up the Kubernetes dashboard. We have the whole, uh, the namespace would be the project's name. So that would be team A development. And if we go to pods, all the tasks are run as pods in Kubernetes. So uh, we can do that. And uh, we do not have to keep a pod hanging. We can just mark it completed as, the, as soon as the ta task is finished. So there is no uh, overhead of any of the resources, uh, just dynamic completion. After that, we can also check the inputs, the outputs, and uh, we have this URI for S3 where the outputs have been saved. We can reference this S3 URI to a different path or a different workflow as well. Right? Uh, okay. Let's do something else. So, we have done a lot of things here. Let's do one more thing. So, uh, I talked about referencing a method of another uh, workflow. So here we are referencing a method of uh, project team A and the domain would be development and the name of the task would be team A dot train model. So team A dot train model would be this one, right? So we are going to reference this uh, method into a different workflow. So that would be let's see. Okay, let's see what the problem is. Unexpected keyword argument versions. Still having some problem. container image, something, something. Okay, mm, I'm not able to execute this particular reference.py file, but uh, the general idea of this was uh, that is in a different workflow, we can actually just have the task of some earlier workflow being referenced to a new workflow. So this was that part of it. Also, uh, because we have uh, segregation of projects uh, on flight and a segregation of domains on flight. Uh, this also enables multi-tenancy to all of your uh, ML workflows. Yeah. And that would be it. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. Yeah. 
uh, we can reference the whole task as well and we can reference the output of that task as well. Uh, we can do that if we want to just fetch the data. If the task is just fetching the data, we can either if we want to just reference the task of fetching the data and re-executing that whole task or we can just put uh, reference the S3 path where the output of that task was stored and we can uh, use that. No, it does not change the original workflow. It is for the new workflow. Uh, the, it, it will only change if the new workflow has a different set of tasks which would interfere with the reference task. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Okay, so his question is, uh, uh, did we check out Airflow or not? So the basic answer is, uh, flight is generally uh, a fork of Airflow. And it was uh, actually started at Lyft. And uh, they found out that uh, Airflow was not, uh, not suitable for ML workloads. And uh, so therefore, they created a new fork uh, of Airflow, and they created flight for it. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Uh, okay. Okay, so I would like to just reiterate your question. Uh, her question is, why can't we just use Airflow uh, instead of using two different pro uh, products? Uh, my answer would be that uh, one Airflow, for doing that, we will have a separate team which would be integrating those uh, features into Airflow and uh, that over, like that overhead and installing flight and using that overhead, uh, you need to do comparisons for your own uh, organization. I would generally prefer flight because uh, one, the community is very nice. Also, I know that uh, Airflow has been um, like used heavily everywhere. Uh, although, uh, and yeah, everything is written in uh, Python and Airflow as well. Uh, although the new things that are coming like DRAs and everything uh, in flight. Um, I don't see that being supported right now and I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, that would be, yes. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, that that overhead we will have to check on the basis of organizational needs. So right now we do not use Airflows. Uh, I use Argo workflows. And uh, for that, the flight on top of Argo workflows, it's like a very good connection towards it. But if you have Airflows, uh, we can use one, we can use either of them, like flight or airflows. And uh, if we can create like a bridge between the data checkpoints of airflow and flight, that would be ideal scenario. Sure. Yes, your question. Did I say compile? I said uh, static execution and runtime execution. Uh, did I say? Huh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, 
Okay, so we actually create a DAG. How do we create a DAG? Uh, if we go into the code here, let me just get that. Or on this. Yeah. So we actually create the whole DAG ourselves. Yes. No, uh, we can see that before execution as well, because uh, when we register the whole uh, workflow, it will check if the workflow is actually correct or not. Yeah, it just goes through if it's uh, referenced correctly, I would say. Um, and when it starts executing, it will go and uh, then just mark it over that. As, okay, so it will work like a basic import as well. If we are referencing, referencing any other file for uh, like tasks, uh, if we have n number of tasks that are listed inside our Python file, that's great. Uh, but if we are ma making a new workflow out of it, we need to mention those methods, right? So I don't like, can you just reiterate your question on that? It should be able to. Let's let we can try that actually. Okay. Yeah, and if we are basically calling another task, that would be would not would that not be a cycle? Yeah. Ah, okay. First of all, um, if we... I actually, for that, I do not know the answer. Yeah, um, I can look it up and uh, let you know about that. But uh, if we are referencing another task from one task, that would be something like a cycle and that is not allowed in a DAG. Uh, if we want to do that, uh, Probably we will either have to not mention one of the tasks as task and keep that as a general function and uh, then proceed ahead. Sure. Any other questions? We have like two minutes. Yeah, sure. Yes. No, no. Uh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that was all. Uh, thank you so much for coming and joining. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me or Shivai uh, on Twitter. That's our Twitter handles. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, that's our Twitter handles. <laughs> okay. Thank you.